Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blade. And this is the Oh My God Show. And we are reading through the Bible. And we are in the book of Exodus. Now, the Bible here is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It has a total of 66 books. Now, each book is divided into chapters and verses. The Bible has the ability to change your life because surely it has changed mine. Now, we are following the Israelites as they wander around the desert or the wilderness. And they are being been given instructions. The tabernacle has been created. Aaron and his sons have been appointed as priests. And now we see as well where they just uh, got consecrated in chapter 29. And in verse 30, we are going to see a lot of uh, details of the tabernacle and the altar of incense, atonement for money and various uh, practices that they will have to do as priests. Now let's get right into it. Now in chapter 30, verse 1, it says, Make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be square, a cubic long, and a cubit wide, and two cubits high. It's on of one piece with it. In verse 3, it says, Overlay the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold, and make a gold molding around it. Make two gold rings for the altar below the molding, two on each of the opposite sides, to hold the poles used to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Put the altar in front of the curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant Law before the atonement cover that is over the ta tablets of the Covenant Law, where I will meet with you. Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends the lamps. He must burn incense again when he lights the lamp at the twilight so incense will burn regularly before the Lord for the generations to come. Do not offer on this altar any other incense or any burnt offering or grain offering and do not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year, Aaron shall make atonement on its horns. This annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering for the generations to come. It is most holy to the Lord. And as we said before, most of the time there is no sacrifice that is being made without blood. Uh, it's very important, especially as it relates to the sin offering. Now, in verse 11, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, When you take a census uh, of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time he is counted. Then no plague will come on them when you number them. Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give a half shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 geras. This half shekel is an offering to the Lord. All who cross over those 20 years old or more are to give an offering to the Lord. The rich are not to give more than a half shekel and the poor are not to give less when you make offering to the Lord to atone for your lives. Receive the atonement money from the Israelites and use it for the service of the tent of meeting. It will be a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord, making atonement for your life. So the atonement money that they're giving is symbolic that basically is like they're paying for their lives. And it's not about the amount, but the direct, um, the exact amount that God says. Remember, it's very important. If you're rich, you're not required to give more. If you're poor, you're not supposed to give less. Everybody basically it's almost as if... Wow, this is a revelation I'm getting just now. Like, it doesn't matter who you are, to God, our lives. Oh my gosh. Oh, glory to God. Like, all of us, our lives are worth the same to God. Rich or poor, a life is a life. Mm -mm -mm. A life is a life. And maybe it's going to make more sense as we go uh, further on <laughs> into the New Testament where a life is really just a life. It doesn't matter who you are. We are the same before God as it relates to your soul, as it relates to salvation. Wow. Anyway, let's continue. Now in verse 17, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister by presenting a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. 
This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for generations to come. In verse 22, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much, that's so, 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekels and a hin of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil, then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the covenant law, the table and all its articles, the lampstands and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and the basin with its stands. You shall consecrate them so they will be most holy and whatever touches them will be holy. In verse 30, it says, anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so they may serve me as priest. Say to the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil for generations to come. Now, remember that Aaron and Moses and all of the other Israelites are all valuable to God. But the difference between Aaron and his sons and the rest, the fact that God has elevated them, promoted them to the position of priest, is the sacred anointing. It's been anointed by God. It's been consecrated by God. It's been chosen for a particular work by God. Just like how now we have pastors and so on and all of us, as it was just established further up in the scripture, that life to God, all of us, our lives have the same value to God. But the difference between someone who God is using is usually that anointing, that consecration, and often that desire that we have in us to be more, to be servants of the Most High God. No, all of us have that slave, slave, sorry. All of us have that opportunity to have access to the consecration, to have access to that anointing. And we see where it is the anointing of God. It's been consecrated that by God in a specific way that is setting Aaron and his sons apart um, from the other people here. Do not pour it on anyone else's body and do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is sacred and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and puts it on any other, um, any other than a priest must be cut off from their people so these are basically a blends of oils or perfume that the priest should wear i guess anybody can replicate the formula but again this formula is very uh, specific you will not even get a chance to smell like a priest if you are not a priest if you're not called of god you don't get to <laughs> you don't get to wear the perfume because the perfume represents the presence of god the anointing of god authority it cannot be bought it cannot be made it cannot be given away it must be ordained for you specifically and this is what we are seeing here now in verse 34 it says then the lord said to moses take fragrant spices gum resin um, uncha and galbo, <laughs> um, galbamum. You know, guys, I'm suffering sometimes with these words, but <laughs> just bear with me. And pure frankincense, all in equal amounts, and make a fragrant blend of incense, the work of a perfumer. It is to be salted and pure and sacred. Grind some of it to powder and place it in front of the ark of the covenant law in the tent of meeting where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. Do not make any incense with this formula. For yourself, consider it holy to the Lord. Whoever makes incense like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from its people. So to steal, to fake, to replicate the anointing of God that's not been given to you by God in this day, in this time, in this scripture is a death sentence cannot be bought it must be given to you by god it cannot be copied it cannot be replicated it should not be and this is the consequence because the anointing of god is it carries a lot of weight and this is what we're seeing here and this is really the end of chapter 30 oh my gosh i really uh you know it's amazing the anointing of god is special it's important it is something very beautiful 
and uh oh my gosh i'm just gonna stop talking now right but uh, thank you so much for watching and as we proceed we will just get more juicy details of what's going on uh with the children of israel and their day-to-day -day lives uh and being in the presence of god and how god is relating to them and who he's using to speak with them as well uh god we thank you for your grace we thank you, O oh God, that your anointing is so important, that your anointing is so sacred and so powerful and that we should not take it for granted. It cannot be bought. It cannot be given away. Father God, we can only earn the right, O oh God, to be in your presence. And Father God, you have opened doors for us, O oh God, to be in your presence, O oh God. Father God, anoint us, O oh God. We are asking you, O oh God. Father God, consider us, O oh God, to be your priest. And we thank you for all that you do and all you've done in our lives, O oh God, in my life, in the lives of the this viewers, oh God, I thank you, oh God, that you are opening their eyes, oh God, that you are anointing them afresh, oh God, that you are creating special perfumes, specially designed for their own lives for their own healing and for their deliverance, O oh God. Father God, create oils, O oh God, that will be unique to us, O oh God. Oil of life, oil of favor, oil of grace, oil of anointing, O oh God. In Jesus Christ's name, oil of service. Amen. And remember, guys, just before you go, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and turn on the post notification bell. And let's see what's going to happen as we go um, deeper into the scriptures. Bye. See you next time. I'm Blade and I'm cutting.